Ladies and gentlemen, one of the major municipal elections, the major municipal election coming up April 2nd is the race for the mayor of Chicago. We will have not only a new mayor of Chicago, but we are going to make history because we are going to have a black woman for the first time be the mayor of Chicago as Lori Lightfoot is running against Cook County Board President Tony Preckwinkle. Now joining us from Chicago, right after the two candidates just had their first debate is Jeff Berkowitz. And I will tell you, I apologize that uh, Mr. Berkowitz, while he is live with us, uh, his video is frozen, and so we're just going to have to see his smiling face frozen on the screen. But Jeff, thank you for joining us from Chicago, and we wanted to get your thoughts as you were attending this debate on how the candidates did and what were some of the major issues that came up during this NBC5 uh, Chicago debate. Okay, the overview is that there was very little new that came out of this. The There was a poll a day recently after the April 26th election that showed surprisingly Lori Lightfoot leading by 58 to 30, almost two to one over her opponent, Cook County Board President Tony Preckwinkle. So it appears as an overview, Preckwinkle came out swinging. She must believe that poll. And, and Lightfoot was trying to just keep things the same, no mistakes. That's my view based on watching this debate for an hour. Now, uh, swinging on personality, uh, swinging trying to show, when Lori talked about what she had done and it was Preckwinkle's turn to talk about her life a little bit, she said, it's, you know, it's important what you were actually doing, okay? She said, Preckwinkle emphasized she was an alderman, she was a teacher, she was a Cook County Board President. So in her view, she was fighting as Lori Lightfoot was a partner at a law firm that was defending people who, large companies who had foreclosed, who had engaged in racial discrimination, on and on. So as you know, when you're a lawyer, you take on clients. Everybody deserves a defense. So, so it sounds defense. like Preckwinkle was uh, on the attack against Lightfoot, trying to score points with the apparent right. large uh, lead of that Lightfoot. Now, at least in the polls, seems to be holding. Right. Another example was that Lori Lightfoot, apparently, I didn't see it, was standing with two aldermen today, or recently, Spazzato, Chicago alderman, and Napolitano. Both are, although Democrats, a little bit more to the right than other Democrats, and may have some leanings in support of Trump, in support of ICE and that type of thing. So Preckwinkle went after her. She said, these folks endorsed you. And then Preckwinkle, and, and Lightfoot tried to say, no, 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 they didn't really endorse me. And Preckwinkle said, well, you don't usually stand next to people and just have them talk about you when they're not endorsing. So it was going back and forth on that. More Preckwinkle tried to muddy up Lori Lightfoot, who apparently she would say, everybody thinks she's great. She's not, there's not a lot of known, known about her, they say, because she's not held public office. When you so, and I talked the, recently, and uh, we're going to have that conversation aired around the state uh, in this coming week, but when you and I talked recently about this, you brought up that there is going to be a major jump in the cost of the pension payments for the city of Chicago. Did you bring that up in questioning, and uh, to what extent did the, and either of them have an answer? Right, because, you know, during the debate, Carol Marine, who was moderating from NBC, she asked about pensions and what they would do, and they both basically said nothing. I mean, we'll try, we'll look at it, and we'll, we'll keep firm. Marine asked her, would you consider doing anything that would cut benefits? If you could, it's hard to see how you do it. And they said, no, those benefits must stay the same. And Marine never went further. But in the press conference, I said to, you know, to Lori Lightfoot, I said, where would you get the additional billion dollars? Specific, specific question. She went back to the general answer she had before the April 26th election. You know, Jeff, it's a matter of, you know, you have to be more efficient. We have to, you know, look at things. And she wouldn't really say. And are you, am I right and, that the, the payment is going to go from about $1 billion to $2 billion? So 
that's a lot of efficiency to make up for another billion dollars that you have to find. Absolutely, you can't. It's a non-answer because clearly Lightfoot believes she's ahead and she, don't have, she doesn't have to answer my question specifically. It could get her in trouble. So go back to the, what she was saying before, as you've, you know, just we'll try to be more efficient. And it's not just that it goes up a billion in four years. It starts going up this year. It's like 300 or 400 million payment is due in four or five months, and then another increase in 2021. So by the time you get to 23, gradually you've gone up, but you've paid more each year. You're paying right now 1.2 billion toward your, from the city of Chicago towards your pensions. It goes up to 2.2 billion, a doubling almost of the amount. So, and when I asked, when I asked uh, Preckwinkle the same question, keep them fair. Preckwinkle did give a little bit more of an answer, and she said, you know, when I came to the Cook County Board Presidency, I think she said, so we had something like a $400 million deficit, we had to make up. I did cuts across various agencies. She didn't quite say, but it sounded, you know, could be across the board cuts that she did in Cook County Board. She might do advocate the same for the city. Um, you know, and also she went to efficiencies. She gave workers comp is something that's very inefficient. She would do that. Lori Lightfoot, to her credit, said on efficiencies, we should have a risk management policy. If we did, we would avoid a lot of claims. But so you get the gist. That was pensions. I, uh, Jeff, was let pensions. me just uh, remind our viewers in case you're joining late. We're talking with Jeff Berkowitz. He's a political analyst in Chicago. Unfortunately, Jeff, uh, his video is frozen because of Wi-Fi problems there in the studio at Channel 5 Chicago. So we apologize to our viewers, but we can hear Jeff fine and we have his image on the screen. So uh, you'll understand why the, his image is frozen. Jeff, as we, as you looked at the demeanor of the candidates, that uh, uh, you and I like to talk about the nitty gritty of the policies, but how did they come off on screen? Was their demeanor proper or feisty or just how would you describe it? And did you did you think one uh, candidate had the upper hand on the other? No, I think in turn they were both feisty. I would say Preckwinkle was a bit more feisty because she's kind of the underdog now, so she's got it. She has to do that. She'll risk appearing too feisty. But they both came across fairly well. Then they started accusing each other of lying. Carol Marine sort of stepped between the two boxers, separated them, and then they calmed down. But like boxers, they were they were going back at it again. So the demeanor was fairly good for both. They both look like they are quality candidates running for mayor in the city of Chicago. They both look like they, they're not amateurs. And, uh, you know, I can go on more about the key issues. We did get a little bit of information, if you like, on, again, I asked them, I asked Lori Lightfoot. Actually, I asked Preckwinkle. How she would, um, you know, an education. Well, how, what would be a substantive policy difference? Substantive, I said, between Lightfoot and Preckwinkle. She said, well, you know, she said, she was a teacher. And then somebody followed up and said, for, she was not in the classroom all that long. She might have been a teacher for 20 who, years. Who was the teacher? Lightfoot, you say? Okay. <clears throat> teachers go through and how to improve it than Lightfoot who never Let me ask you before time runs out, two things. One, um, what what accounts for this lead? Do you, do you Are you hearing from people? Are there people calling into radio talk shows that uh, explains why Lori Lightfoot seems to have this uh, pretty large lead, at least in the polls, because uh, my gut feel was that it was going to be a tight race, and at least for initially, it sounds like maybe it wouldn't be. So that's number one. And then number two, how many 
debates are they going to have between now and April 2nd? Well, I don't know if they've decided that yet. I know WTTW has scheduled one for March 21. Uh, other than that, I don't know of others. I imagine if I had to speculate, I would say, you know, two or three more. Uh, I don't think anybody has come up with the answer as to why Preckwinkle is losing by so much, if that poll is accurate. They would probably speculate and say that, you know, change is important and Lightfoot appears to be the change candidate. She's never held public office. She's younger. She's in her mid-50s. Preckwinkle is, I think, 71. She looks older and she's, she looks, she's a quality person and she looks nice. But a 71-year-old is going to look a bit older than 55. And, and you know, it's kind of interesting to think about this, that, I mean, a lot of times we have uh, a black candidate or a woman candidate running against, uh, you know, maybe a white male. And in this case, when you have two black women, uh, it kind of washes it all out. So then, you know, maybe we're going to look more at the substantive nature of this race uh, and not the, uh, the imagery that so many times we get wrapped up uh, in some of these comp uh, contests. Uh, so on, on overall tonight, the, uh, the final assessment, was it a, uh, a draw, or did you think that the one candidate had more of the upper hand than the other? Who no, won? I'd say, uh, I'd say it was a draw. You might give a slight advantage for, to Preckwinkle for her aggressiveness. So if you were scoring this like a gymnastic meet, you know, she set herself a more difficult task. She came out swinging. She, so you might give her a little bit more, but she's, if there is a 30 point uh, difference, she's not going to win doing that. She's going to need, she's going to need to separate Lori Lightfoot for, from her on the issues. And that she did not do tonight. She's, that's what she'll have to do. She'll have to make sure she says, she says she's for change. I'm for change. She didn't quite do that tonight. And if so we take this on March left. the 7th, uh, there's only approximately three weeks left. So this, this race is going to go fast if uh, Preckwinkle is going to make up the difference. Uh, obviously, she's going to have to score some points. Before we close out, uh, any last words? You know, it's as you say, the election, the election is April 2. That's 25 days. Uh, Chicago, they were calling it, we were calling it an historic election because it's, it had, you will have your first Afri female African-American mayor in Chicago, whoever wins, so it's historic in that well, sense. Well, not, not first, I mean, you had Harold Washington, but a first African-American no, woman. First female. Yeah. But yeah, right. The first African-American woman will certainly, that will happen since they are both African-American women. There is the difference that, uh, that uh, Lori Lightfoot is, is, is a lesbian. She's married to another woman, has been so for 10 years. She's got a daughter. So there's that aspect of the LGBT plus or Q community. Um, there's also the difference in terms of one has been in office for, for you know, uh, maybe 30 years. Well, we got about 30 or so. seconds or so. Let's... Yeah. The other's new. She's new to government. She's been involved in government and various reasons. So those things that I just said, that could be that could be the basis for people making their decision unless either of these candidates starts doing more to separate each other on the issues. All right, Jeff Perkowitz, thanks for joining us from Chicago and giving us the wrap-up of the first debate between the candidates Lori Lightfoot and Tony Preckwinkle. And perhaps we can visit with you again if we have another debate to come up and get your insights. And we hope for our viewers that we can have your video working at that time. Thanks so much. Thanks, Jeff.